Vayikra chapter 14. Yehovah said to Moshe, This is to be the law concerning the person afflicted with Zarat on the day of his purification. He is to be brought to the Kohen, and the Kohen is to go outside the camp and examine him there. If he sees that the Zarat sores have been healed in the afflicted person, and the Kohen will order that two living clean birds be taken for the one to be purified, along with cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop leaves. The Kohen is to order one of the birds slaughtered in a clay pot over running water. As for the live bird, he is to take it with the cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop and dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird slaughtered over running water and sprinkle the person to be purified from the Zararat seven times. Next, he is to set the live bird free in an open field. He who is to be purified must wash his clothes, shave off all his hair, and bathe himself in water. Then he will be clean, and after that he may enter the camp. But he must live outside his tent for seven days. On the seventh day, he is to shave all the hair off his head, also his beard and eyebrows. He must shave off all his hair, and he is to wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and he will be clean. On the eighth day, he is to take two male lambs without defect, one female lamb in its first year without defect, and six and a half quarts of fine flour for a grain offering mixed with olive oil and two third thirds of a pint of olive oil. The Kohen purifying him is to place the person being purified with these items before Yehovah at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The Kohen is to take one of the male lambs and offer it as a guilt offering with the two-thirds pint of olive oil, then wave them as a wave offering before Yehovah. He is to slaughter the male lamb at the place in the sanctuary for slaughtering sin offerings and burnt offerings. Because the guilt offering belongs to the Kohen, just like the sin offering, it is especially holy. The Kohen is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of the person being purified, on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. Next, the Kohen is to take some of the two-thirds pint of olive oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. Dip his right finger in the olive, dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and sprinkle from the oil with his finger seven times before Yehovah. Then the Kohen is to put some of the remaining oil in his hand on the tip of the right ear of the person being purified on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot and on the blood of the guilt offering. Finally, the Kohen is to put the rest of the oil in his hand on the head of the person being purified and the Kohen will make atonement for him before Yehovah. The Kohen is to offer the sin offering and make atonement for the person being purified because of his uncleanness. Afterwards, he is to slaughter the burnt offering the Kohen is to offer the burnt offering and grain offering on the altar. Thus the Kohen will make atonement for him and he will be clean. If he is poor so that he can't afford to do otherwise, he is to take one male lamb as a guilt offering to be waived to make atonement for him, two quarts of fine flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, two thirds of a pint of olive oil, and two doves or two young pigeons such as he can afford, the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. On the eighth day, he will bring them to the Kohen for his purification, to the entrance of the tent of meeting before Yehovah. The Kohen is to take the lamb of the guilt offering and the two-thirds of a pint of olive oil and wave them as a wave offering before Yehovah. He is to slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering, and the Kohen is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of the person being purified, on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. The Kohen is to take some of the olive oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand and sprinkle with his right hand 
some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before Yehovah. The Kohen is to put some of the oil in, the, in his hand on the tip of the right ear of the person being purified on the thumb of his right hand on the big toe of his right foot in the same place as the blood of the guilt offering. Finally, the Kohen is to put the rest of the oil in his hand on the head of the person being purified to make atonement for him before Yehovah. He is to offer one of the doves or young pigeons, such as the person can afford, whatever his means suffice for, the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. With the grain offering, thus the Kohen will make atonement before Yehovah for the person being purified. Such is the law for the person who has Zarat sores if he cannot afford the usual elements used, in his, used for his purification. Yehovah said to Moshe and Aharon, When you have entered the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put an infection of Zara in a house in the land that you possess, then the owner of the house is to come and tell the Kohen. It seems to me that there may be an infection in the house. The Kohen is to order the house emptied before he goes in to inspect the infection so that everything in the house won't be made unclean. Afterwards, the Kohen is to enter and inspect the house. He will examine the infection, and if he sees that the infection is in the walls of the house with greenish or reddish depressions that seem to go in deeper than the surface of the wall, he is to go out of the house to its door and seal up the house for seven days. The Kohen will come again on the seventh day and examine the house. If he sees that the infection has spread over its walls, he is to order them to remove the infected stones and throw them into some unclean place outside the city. Next, he is to have the inside of the house thoroughly scraped, and the scraped off plaster is to be discarded outside the city in an unclean place. Finally, other stones must be set in the place of the first stones and other plaster used to replaster the house. If the infection returns and breaks out in the house after the stones have been removed and the house scraped and plastered, then the Kohen is to enter and examine it. If he sees that the infection has spread in the house, it is a contagious zarat in the house. It is unclean. He must break down the house and take its stones, timber and plaster, out of the city to an unclean place. Moreover, whoever enters the house at any time while it is sealed up will be unclean until evening. Whoever lies down or eats in the house must wash his clothes. If the Kohen enters, examines, and sees that the infection has not spread in the house since it was plastered, then he is to declare the house clean because the infection is cured. To purify the house, he is to take two birds, cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop leaves. He is to slaughter one of the birds in a clay pot over running water. He is to take the cedar wood, the hyssop, the scarlet yarn, and the live bird and dip them in the blood of the slaughtered bird and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He will purify the house with the blood of the bird, the running water, the live bird, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet yarn. But he is to set the live bird free outside the city in an open field. Thus will he make atonement for the house, and it will be clean. Such is the law for all kinds of zarat sores, for a crushed, for a crusted area, for zarat in a garment, for a house, for a swelling, for a scab, and for a bright spot, to determine when it is clean and when it is unclean. This is the law concerning zarat.